What's up guys? It's Cove again. And uh, today we're gonna look at uh, we're gonna watch two replays and I'm gonna talk about the campaign but first I wanted to show you guys what personally I got for fame even though I didn't really play the entire second week until like the last two nights. So yeah if I uh, I ended up having to go to work two of the nights in the first week and uh, yeah I ended up getting benched on my team because of that and that was completely fine by me honestly because you know it's nothing I could we could have done differently about that I wasn't supposed to get called into work and then ended up getting called into work uh, for two nights in a row so I missed two nights in a row plus half of another night so and then after that I just kind of like you know filled a and B teams, so field spots. If anybody was missing, just field them. Make sure they got tanks. We ended up getting eight tanks total, or is it nine? It's either eight or nine. I think it's eight, which is uh, actually one of the higher uh, numbers of tanks from uh, clans around our size. Um, <clears throat> But yeah, what I'm planning on doing is uh, grabbing the chieftain style out of the out of the fame store, and then getting as many bonds as I can after that. Because uh, uh, I may or may not be able to get uh, the chieftain with only like it'll be about seventeen thousand bonds. I ended up getting the six hundred bond reward, and uh, we got a four point five times multiplier, so that's. 2700 I believe is what I did for the math and then I can get about 2700 from the the fame store and I was like eh I can go ahead and get the uh, the chieftain skin and then also get uh, 9 out of the 10 bond rewards and then grind the rest of the way up to 17,000 and then put all of that on a chieftain because I'm not really sure how it's going to end up being but I'm going to go ahead and throw up some gameplay of some of my underrated tanks that I love to play. And, uh, yeah, I will see you guys in just a minute. And I am back. Obviously. <sighs> we will be playing this battle on uh, Malinovka in the E50M. Uh, so, confrontation, I don't know, it seemed like it was more tiring than previous um, Clan Wars events, maybe because of the constant use of um, advanced front battles. If you didn't get any advanced front battles, there's no chance in hell that you possibly made it to the top 1200. So that's kind of the annoying part about it, as I get robbed there. Uh, another uh, big issue that I had with the uh, with the campaign was uh, just the, the the map pool was kind of limited, and so you only had. Uh, 12 maps, 10 maps, something like that, like, incredibly limited compared to, um, previous Clan Wars. We played Fjords, uh, a lot, which is something I had never played in Clan Wars before. And we played, uh, Airfield, which I hadn't played in Clan Wars in many years. So there was, there was a lot of maps that I just don't normally play in Clan Wars that I, I did, but overall it was just, it seemed like there weren't very many maps, and that may have just been the way that, that we were uh, chipping, uh, just to, to get our strong maps out of the way, or to get into our strong maps I guess. Or get easier matchups on certain maps, uh, which would be, for whatever reason, Miravenka uh, 
which is the map of the Magical Forest, since nobody can ever remember that except for me, apparently, uh, was one of the, one of the maps that seemed to have like really weak uh, tournaments, so they weren't there weren't a lot of people in them, which I I thought was kind of interesting, I guess, because that's a that's a map that I thought would have a stronger map or pool of teams in it. Uh, but my main issue with the uh, the entire Clan War season was just like why would they possibly like I don't get it. I don't get why they limited to Twelve hundred reward vehicles earned, like earned reward vehicles. Um, I'm especially gonna gripe because I was definitely well within the window of would have gotten one if it was uh, twenty two fifty. Um, I think I ended up in just outside the top two thousand players, even though I did not play for like the entirety of the second week. I'd play like one or two battles a night until the last two nights and then I had to fill in for a couple of people who uh, had things come up and couldn't play so I ended up actually playing with my original team for the last two nights which was nice because it actually got me back up to nearly a thousand fame but other than that it was just like if you didn't play battles on the advanced front there was like no point in playing the battles it almost seemed like um, yeah, you wanted to go deep in the in the basic tournaments, but if you thought about it, like you had to go the entire basic tournament to get like two battles worth of an advanced run tournament, right? So, at, in in that regard, it wasn't it wasn't very fun, especially since like the first two nights, most clans aren't gonna have any advanced front tournaments, right? It's only going to be your top 10, 15 clans that are going to have your most of your fame to bid on this. Like at all, so. But, it is what it is. And I'm not going to complain about it. So, at the end of this game, we ended up with uh, a shitload of damage and uh, 5 kills. Which is always fun. And I slide for my screenshot that I'm going to take here in a second. So I'll see you guys in the next replay. I'm grabbing my screenshot for the video uh, thumbnail. Welcome back, guys. Um, so we're on a battle in Miravenka, obviously. As I. There we go. I got it. There it is. And we're playing with Angry Asian, who is memeing in the shitborn. Um, anyway, so back to what I was saying in the battle before. Uh, I don't really understand why they changed the fame point system and the number of reward tanks in the same season. It's, Angry just deletes a T62A. Um, I had to stop and take a breath there uh, in the battle after he did that. I thought it was, it seemed kind of dumb. So, it is what it is, I guess. It, it just seemed really, like a really stupid idea. Like, yeah, change the fame point system, I get that, because the old fame point system was broken. But if they didn't change the number of tanks, they wouldn't have hurt most of the mid-tier clans. Most of the mid-tier clans got about the same amount of tanks, or much less than we did. Uh, just from, like, the actual reward tanks. So, like, I don't, I don't get why they, they changed the number of tanks. I do understand why they changed uh, the point system, because the point system heavily favored... Uh, holding 
holding land and investing points, which is not something that all clans can do. And kind of what ended up happening was this, like, top 10, 15 clans would hold all of the land on the basic front and invest all of that fame and nobody else could hardly get any fame because you, <laughs> you couldn't take land from the top 10, 15 clans and occasionally you would, but it was rare. Uh, so overall, uh, we started this clan war at like a thousand elo, just above a thousand elo, and we ended at 1200. So like overall, we had a really, really good uh, clan wars clan-wide, at least. SST-57 is just... I don't even know what the fuck is happening in front of my eyes right now. I was just like, ah, farm mouse, farm mouse, farm mouse. Uh, the trolley gun on the, uh, on the AMX-30B kind of hindered me a little bit there, but it is what it is. Um, yeah, that was a bad lamb shot. It also went into the dirt directly in front of me, so... Um, another issue I had with, um, I don't know if I've already said this or not, but, uh, you literally could not make up any spots, positions, anything without, uh, playing advanced front battles. You had to play the advanced front. If you did not play the advanced front, you did not get hardly any fame points. Like, advanced front was probably the most important thing to do. Even if you played on, like, the elite front, it didn't seem like... The way I did my math, anyway. A win on the elite front would have been 38 points, whereas a win on the advanced front was 31 points. So... Just ignore the elite front the entire time, unless you're trying to get the clan fame if you're give up cracked relic um who else did i see hold uh land on the advanced front uh, i think mega ended up holding at least a couple of provinces on the advanced front or the elite front uh, maybe even teach and those clans like that but all the elite front was top 10 top 15. Uh, Force was the lowest ranked clan that I saw hold land on the elite front. And I mean, they're ranked what? They ended up ranked 12th, 13th, something like that. Or maybe 10th. I don't even know. But, yeah. It was, it was kind of... It was a useless thing for mid-tier clans to do. You had no reason. If you were outside the top 10, top 15... You had no reason to be playing on the advanced front, or the elite front. You would have been much better off just um, getting fame from the elite front. I mean, the advanced front. Just avoid the elite front, save your fame, get into auctions, uh, take basic front land that has um, advanced front chips, and get free and or... Um, cheaper advanced front battles, right? And so, what ended up happening was just like the advanced front uh, tournaments would be stacked with like 1100 to 1200 ELO clans with uh, a couple of 1300 ELO clans in there. And occasionally you'd meet an otter, a cracked, or something like that in the tournament, like late, later in the tournament. Not even holding land, they were just in the tournament, but you'd meet them later in the tournament because they'd always have like the highest fame and you're like, or the highest experience on the, on the battle and you're like struggling to get the kills and win the game against the other 1200, 1100, 1300 ELO clans. And... Then you go up against Otter, Cracked, Relic, and you'd either get smacked or you'd steal a shitload of fam from them. So we had a... What ended up happening later in the campaign was we had a... Uh, 
we had a defense battle on Muravenka against Relic, and we ended up stealing 16k fame on the second to last night, I think it was. And so, what ended up happening was we weren't going to chip any more advanced frontland, which actually would have been detrimental to the people we had into the uh, tank reward uh, bracket anyway. And so after that, after that game, we uh, kind of got our, our map chipper to give us an advanced front tournament. And we ended up we ended up bidding for three advanced front tournaments and uh, getting, um, uh, two of them on the final night. So it ended up helping out a lot. And for whatever reason, we were super cracked on airfield with like a somewhat dumb strategy, but it was so dumb that it worked. Shout out to Mike for the overpowered idiocracy that was his airfield strap. But yeah, it was just, I don't know. Overall, I think it was, uh, it was a fun season of Clan Wars. It was just, it was tiring and kind of annoying and where we thought the cut line for the tanks was going to be ended up being like where like 1600th place was like we everybody initially thought it'd be about 1800 1750 something like that that's where i was saying i was like it's going to be around 1750 it's got to be after uh, after the second monday night and then the second Tuesday night rolled around, and I was like, oh, shit. Our A team was, like, at 1,700 on Tuesday night, I think. Maybe, no, 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 no. Maybe they were, like, 16, 1,500, something like that. And I was like, huh. Yeah, no, I think we're all wrong. I think it's going to be closer to, like, 2,200, which is where it kind of ended up being around. It was, like, uh... 2100 2005 2050 something like that which is ridiculous because that's like you have to go deep in a advanced front tournament every single night so if you get screwed on your chip so you chip the advanced front right and you drag uh, you, you get two two tournaments in the advanced front say and uh, first round you end up playing um force in one which is a beatable clan and relic in the other <laughs> like those are two beatable clans but you're not going to go into there with confidence that you're going to win you're playing force and relic and they're 20 spots ahead of you and like 20 of their players are in the tanks so i mean like it is what it is but i think i'm gonna have to go to another replay and welcome back. So, um, yeah, controversies, and uh, this time, in this battle, I'm going to actually do a bit of uh, incoming information that's going to be happening, future live streams, channel updates, stuff like that. So, um, main controversy of this campaign, well, it was... It's not just this campaign, and I think it's been happening for a couple of years. Uh, Chinese migration to CCG. So you may have noticed that CCG was um, number one after night one, I believe. Um, so that's always great. Uh, another kind of. Uh, so if you don't know about the uh, the CCG thing, right? Uh, there's apparently a Chinese mercenary group that goes around and kind of just plays uh, with the highest bidder and boosts their players into tanks. Which is, uh, yeah. Kind of ridiculous if you ask me that it's allowed to happen and that they do it 
to be entirely honest. Um, but Wargaming is not going to do anything about it. So, I mean, don't expect these players to get banned. They won't. Um, it's completely within the rules of the game. Uh, but, yeah, it's kind of dumb, in my opinion. Why am I not shooting this leopard? Okay. Oh, there's a Leo here. <laughs> Should have shot him while he was sitting still. Um, no, I just had it. What uh, was it? Oh, yes. So you may have noticed a new clan uh, pop up called Five Dogs. Um, I'm not sure where they originated from. Uh, I don't remember exactly where they came from. But, um, some people have um, reported them for illegal use of mods. Um, so, something you may not notice or know about uh, some of the top clans is that uh, a lot of them. Uh, don't actually play with any mods during clan wars um, to assure uh, that if any of their war or not war <laughs> any of their replays get sent into war gaming that they will be perfectly fine and will not get banned and uh, the clan won't lose position it's a pretty standard thing in, um, in a couple of the top clans, right? Uh, apparently there was a cracked player uh, who was just uh, attempting to feed OP Hacker information that he did not want the entire time. Um, OP Hacker is never really someone that I've thought of as being an actual cheater. He just kind of seems like a good player. Um, obviously, I don't I don't think that he would be the commander of this season, the best clan in World of Tanks, if he was a hacker, so yeah, well, there's another uh, there's another clan commander in the top five that's uh, yeah, a little uh, sus, we might, uh, you might say. You know, don't tell him that, because he'll try to fuck your whole day up. Um, take a shot from the T62A there. Um, channel updates. So, I'm going to do uh, something new that I've never tried before and uh, grind for 1 billion credits. Uh, in the upcoming weeks and months in between clan war seasons. Uh, obviously, I'll still attempt to play the gold season. I'm staying at... Um, I'm going to attempt to stay with Vibe. If Vibe stays together, which I think it will, but I'm going to attempt to stay here until uh, at least next tank campaign. And... Um, yeah, but in between Clan War Seasons, I'm going to attempt to grind to 1 billion credits. Obviously, I'm going to have to play a couple more than 10 games a day, which is pretty much what I do now. And uh, I'm going to be playing a lot of tier 8s, and so I will be probably making some videos um, of replays from the grind. You can probably catch all of the games pretty much live um, on my Twitch channel. Uh, I might play some off, or quite a few off, honestly. Um, but yeah, uh, I'd never want to have to miss a consumable sale again. <laughs> I never want to have to grind credits again. And the best way to do that is to grind to 1 billion credits.
I'm not really sure exactly how long it'll take, how much work it'll be, but I'm going to attempt to do it. That's my big announcement for this video. So now that I've gotten that out of the way, um, time to uh, commentate this gameplay. So we put a massive shot into the 268B4. We're already up to nearly 3,000 combined. No kill though. Um, so the mission I'm attempting to do is um, what is this? Coalition 5. Yeah. So I have to kill one uh, Artie and spot for 1500. Um, yes, I nearly, I could have easily done this as an EBR. In fact, I nearly did, but I got a massive low roll on a tier 9 artillery with an AG shell. I think it rolled for like 440, and the EBRs, HEs roll for 490 or something like that. I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was. I was just like, oh, you gotta be fucking kidding me. Um, uh, yeah. So, actually, spoiler alert, this is the mission, this is the game that I end up getting this mission done with an HE round from a French 105, so really it's, it's the exact same tank, obviously. It has really good armor, just no wheels. I guess it has drive wheels and road wheels, so I mean. So why do I play the AMX 30B so much? Like, I don't know, I, I love the tank design, honestly. I think it's one of the coolest looking tanks ever built, with the exception of the massive cupola that's on top of the tank, which does actually make this tank historically accurate, unlike the Chieftain. Uh, <laughs> yes, the Chieftain does actually have a weak point, and in fact, if you look on Tanks GG, you can find the other models of the Chieftain that are modeled for the game, and see that they have massive weak points on top of the turret, which is quite interesting to me. They'd still be completely overpowered because they do have 12 degrees of gun depression. And a rather strong turret. But none of them are quite as broken as the Chieftain concept that is in the game currently. Um, and then I see the party, right? And what am I gonna do to this already? I need to kill this already. As we put a brilliant shot on the move into the Leo with an AT round, I might add. Um, and the mission completed. Easy, 90 damage. Easy, completed mission. Um, so now I kinda get trolled by this mana core for the next couple minutes of this game. Except for this shot I put in at the ass of the pad. It's always a good thing. And I gotta get back down, back down, back down. Yep. I think I actually go back up here. Maybe not. I think I'm just looking for a shot onto the mana core. And then I see him get spotted probably by me. And my shell hits the dirt. And then I just fire a bad shot. And there's one more in here. And yes, that 268 hit my weak point from about 300 meters away. If you don't know, the 2684 has a horribly inaccurate gun. And they are just pinning my turret uh, constantly. Which is really annoying. It's the most annoying thing about playing this tank. Is you poke out over a ridgeline way before you think you do. But look at the spotting. Look at the spotting. Ah. So yeah, I guess I should start wrapping up the video now that this game's nearly over. Um, 
The overall, I didn't really care for this clan war season all that much. It was kind of annoying, at least for me. And, uh, it was mostly annoying for me because of work and the first couple of nights weren't great. And then a couple of nights in the second week were great, but it is what it is. I feel like I did my part in helping, um, helping some of my clanmates to get reward things out of this season, and I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, obviously, I'm pretty pissed about the whole CCG situation. Um... I'm super happy that we actually end up beating a relic on Muravenka in a, in a land defense. That was always great. It's not like we actually camped them out either. I wasn't in that game, unfortunately. Um, we were um, putting some players in from our B team to make sure that they could, um, nice hammer rack also, I might add. And then I just YOLO into the shit, or the Death Star because, you know, first of all, I didn't think his turret would turn that fast. And, uh, second, I knew that was coming, so, overall, good clan war season. Um. It was fun for me. It was annoying for me. But it is what it is. And uh, yeah. So thanks guys for watching. Uh, I will see you in the billion credit grind. Hopefully. Uh, stop by and yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.